Oh my beautiful and lovely gamers, my name is Jonal. Today we're talking about pros and how to deal with them in Overwatch. If you ever even read a Reddit post or played a rank game or just something in Overwatch, you will have experience talk about throws. You probably caught a throw yourself. Um, how do you deal with them? How do you play around them? Uh, what do you do? And so on. First, I want to specify that majority of the time when people are getting called throwers, they are not throwers. They are just playing bad or you or the guy who just, in general, the guy who says that it's a thrower, normally don't know how well or how bad somebody's playing. Quite simple, because they don't have the game sense, because very few people have, to know what another people is doing when you can't see his monitor. And that's a big reason. And throwing, playing bad isn't throwing. Picking a odd and optimal hero is not throwing. One tricking is not throwing. It doesn't go under the categorizing as throwing the game. Throwing is like intentionally jumping off the map and then respawning and then going and jumping off the map and respawning and jumping off the map. That's throwing the game. Um, or, uh, you know, it's it kind of goes on the kind of same theory of, you know, or just like playing Ryan, just holding W, not swinging, not shielding, on purpose just running into the enemy team and dying and then doing that over and over and over again. That's throwing, that's feeding, that's what you do. Now, but throwing is normally talked about, you know, when people are playing bad. It's just funny when people report or tell people to like, oh, report our Widowmaker, and it's like, for what? She didn't hit enough people? Is that the report that we're supposed to send to Blizzard? Hey guys, can you guys ban this guy because he can't land headshots enough? It's like the arguments, but um, what do you do when you have essentially bad players? What do you do when your team is not performing well or playing really unoptimal picks and so on? Sometimes you can't do anything. Um, some games are lost. As I like to say, GMs can lose in Platinum. That is actually a true fact. I've seen streamers, like really like top 100 streamers, lose in like Diamond and Platinum games. Sometimes you just lose. I have lost in Diamond and Platinum games many times, even though I peaked at 4.2k. And that just happens. Some games are not winnable. That's the point. But the point for you is that you have to perform every single game. Even the games that is losable. Instead of lo looking at a lost game as, oh my god, no, I lost 25 SR, or how much else you lose. Um, rather look at it as, okay, I lost this game. Let's use this still as a training exercise. How do I play with so bad teammates? How do I carry this? Like, it's a really good training exercise. Like, that is like... You know, scenario building 101. So you can work, learn, okay, how can I perform my best even when my team can't pull their own weight? How can I do that? How can I improve on that? That is how you deal with throwers. Even if you lose, you have still learned something. You have still improved. You have still worked on you. Stop, don't need only to call them throwers or trash or whatever you call them. But focus on yourself. What can I do here so you can learn something? So that the next game or when you have had, you know, 10 matches with throwers, you have improved so much that the 11th match you will be able to carry. You will improve better. And the guys who are playing unoptimal or not playing really good or have bad mechanics or doesn't pick correct heroes or whatever they do that's not really good, those guys won't rank up. But you who don't blame your team, who doesn't start yelling at the enemy team and, oh, da, da, you are shit at this game. The guy that doesn't do that and that rather says, okay, this is an <laughs> unfortunate situation. I will do my very best to improve and play good here. And uh, hopefully I will... Uh, click some heads as they, the youth say these days. Those are the guys that will rank up. The guys that focus on the self, the guys that are putting themselves onto an experience just like, okay, I'm just gonna use this as a training exercise. And that's what you should do. So if you get, and, and another thing that I'd like, I'd like to say, which are like an in-game thing, instead of thinking about how bad my team is, and how shit my team is, and how garbage everybody is on my team, focus on the enemy team. How bad they are, because trust me, they will have some really shit players. Somebody, someone that you can bully. There's almost someone on the enemy team. Of those six players, there's almost somebody you can bully. If it is the Ryan, or if it's uh, the support, or one of the DPS, or something like that. There's almost somebody you can bully. There's always someone you can punish. So, yes, pay attention to a team so that you know, you know, okay, my supports are not very good at healing, or my frontline is super aggressive or passive, so you know what they're gonna do. But also, very much look at how can I abuse the enemy team, because again, you are the one you're supposed to carry, make plays. So focus on where is the enemy team going, how, where, what is wrong with their formation, what, what abilities are they wasting all the time, who always overextends, who can I farm ultimate on, who can I easily kill, so on and so on and so on. Look at those, because abusing the enemy team is the only way for you to win. Instead of focusing on your team not killing enough, focus on how you can kill more. Right or whatever role you're playing. Right, if you're playing Mercy, then maybe that 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 one example. If you're playing Mercy, might not really go to you. 
but then it's more damage boosting and damage boosting the correct target on the team watching out for the enemy team so you die late uh, and so on so you can maximize your targeting right because if the enemy team there's always some form of uh, miss form formation or something like that for the enemy team uh, for Arnold's for example there's a lot of time where you can have insane nades and th at that point it's like I naded six while you guys are fighting them it doesn't matter how bad you are that is a huge advantage for you and I slept the whatever I slept right uh, that's a very big advantage while I'm pocketing my entire team and killing some other someone else right you can always abuse the enemy team just because your team is bad doesn't mean that the enemy team is any better and that's one of the big ideas, especially for low elo players. That is like one of the really easy way to kind of focus on 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 winning the game is to rather abuse the enemy team than trying to hope that your team will win for you. Because let's be completely honest, just your team is always like eh most of the time. But I hope that you guys uh, like this video. I hope that this helped. Uh, like the video, subscribe. It always helps out the channel. And if you want to rank up and get better at the game and uh, in general, just improve. It um, doesn't matter if you're bronze or tougher hunter, you can hit me up on our Discord server for a private coaching session. It's 50 euros for a two-hour session. So, I hope I see you guys there. Also, join the Discord community in general because we're going to host Pugs, um, hopefully there very soon. So, join that in case of that. And my Twitter and my Twitch also linked in the description in case you want to, you know, t pop a follow in there. And that's always very nice. Now, I like you guys very much. Peace, care, and positive. As always, within me, you are awesome.